Happy Halloween season, my darklings. Thanks for coming back again. Since it's now officially September and the beginning of the Halloween season, I thought it would be interesting to explore the origins of our favorite holiday and the different icons that have come to populate all of the decor and the traditions that we see in Halloween today. I also wanted to take a little bit of an opportunity to talk about my history with this fantastic holiday and share with you my thoughts around the current petition to have Halloween change from October 31st to the last Saturday in October. So let's go ahead and get into it and get started with the origins of Halloween. As far as history can tell, the holiday of Halloween originated from the Celtic New Year's festival, Samhain. At this time of year, the Celtic people believed that the lines between the worlds of the living and the dead became thinner. This allowed their priests, or druids as they were called, to better ascertain the prophecies that they relied upon to have a successful year to come. This also helped them understand how best to survive the winter that was coming and ensured that they were able to provide the sufficient sacrifice to their gods to ensure success for the year. This was originally a harvest festival where they held large bonfires. They dressed up in costumes, which were typically just animal heads or furs and also gave sacrifices to the gods in those bonfires. After the Romans conquered the Celtic people, they combined Samhain with two different Roman festivals. The first of these festivals was called Feralia, which was meant to commemorate the passing of the dead. The second of which was a festival to honor the goddess Pomona. Pomona was a goddess of trees and fruit, and her official fruit was actually apples. This may lend itself to understand why apples alongside pumpkins have a place in Halloween as well, such as bobbing for apples. In 609 AD, Pope Boniface IV established the Catholic feast of All Martyrs Day. Pope Gregory III then later expanded this feast to include All Saints and moved it from its previous date in May to November 1st. In 1000 AD, the church made November 2nd All Souls Day, and this was a day and feast to honor the dead. All of these church movings and doings and switchings and swappings were made to help bring the Celts into the fold, the remaining Celts into the fold, and sort of envelop those remaining Sowin traditions and bring them to the church, sort of replace that Sowin holiday uh, with a church-sanctioned festival. The earliest celebrations of Halloween in America were seen mostly in Maryland and the South, because a lot of New England was puritanical and would not have celebrated any sort of festivals like this. Um, the first Halloween parties that took place in these times would have pretty closely mirrored the Samhain traditions with the bonfires and the costumes. Um, eventually, colonial traditions also included ghost stories and mischief making. Trick or treating actually originated in the second half of the 19th century. By the beginning of the 20th century, there was a push for more of a community focus for Halloween, and most of the superstitious and religious tones to the event were removed. In the 20s and 30s, we saw maintenance of the community focus and included parades and parties with a Halloween theme, but we did see a return of the mischief and vandalism that originated in America. In the 1950s, we really started to see the shape of our current Halloween traditions because to sort of try to dull down the vandalism, they turned the focus for Halloween to the young and returned to the tradition of trick-or-treating to the spotlight. Obviously, these days, trick-or-treating is still going strong, but we do see plenty of celebrations for adults as well with that community focus, parades, parties, and the like. All of these traditions are still going strong here in America. 
So now let's go ahead and take a look at the origins of some of the popular Halloween icons. Let's start with the first and most obvious, skeletons and ghosts. These were clearly originated from the Sewin traditions. Um, they are both symbols of death or life after death, um, and they place a focus upon mortality. Pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns also originated from Sewin, but were more so on the harvest side of things. The first jack-o'-lanterns were actually made out of turnips. As the Irish folklore story goes, Stingy Jack made a deal with the devil, which he lost. The devil left him to wander the world alone with nothing but a glowing ember to light his way. Jack decided to hollow out a turnip to put his glowing ember in. The Irish and the Scots would use these lanterns to ward away evil spirits on the night of Samhain, or as it later became known, Halloween. Vampires are another icon synonymous with Halloween due to their connection with horror and the undead. And it was this connection that made them the perfect supernatural symbol for this holiday. Bats are another common icon for Halloween because as nocturnal creatures and cave dwelling creatures, they became associated long ago with death and evil. In addition, when the bonfires were lit for Samhain, it would inevitably draw insects to it and likewise, bats. Black cats are another traditional Halloween icon, which originated in medieval times, when people believed the devil could turn himself into a black cat. They were also believed to be witches' familiars, and the color black was always associated with death and evil. Spiders have also been traditionally associated with magic and the supernatural, and the cobwebs they create have always evoked a feeling of abandonment or death. However, the quintessential symbol for Halloween has and probably always will be the witch. Because Halloween originated with the festival of Samhain and the Celtic people, these pagans later became termed witches. And as the originators of the holiday, they are the quintessential icon for Halloween. Some of my fondest memories of the holiday are trick-or-treating as a child. I can still remember um, one of my earliest costumes was a witch. Um, it was made from just a simple candy corn fabric. Um, my mom was not much of a sewer back in the day. She had plenty of other strengths, but she actually sewed this costume for me. And it was always bitter cold, so there's probably a snowsuit under there. Um, but I can remember trick-or-treating way long after I was supposed to. Like, I remember trick-or-treating in high school. Um, and we never really got too many raised eyebrows. I think the community recognized that it was better to have us trick-or-treating than doing anything else. I can remember haunted houses always being a part of the Halloween tradition. Ever since my first haunted house in Door County, um, when I was a child, I always loved going to haunted houses. Another thing that I remember from Halloween was reading, rereading, and rereading the scary stories to tell in the dark books. Um, I had them on permanent checkout from the school library, pretty much, and. Um, those stories hold a special place in my heart. And um, one of the last memories that I have, one of the best last memories that I have is the movie Hocus Pocus. I can remember having a subscription to the little Disney magazine and reading interviews from Thora Birch and reading all about the movie before it came out and um, it will always be one of my favorite Halloween movies for that reason. To wrap things up, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the current petition going around to change the date of Halloween from October 31st to the last Saturday in October. While I can understand why the petition exists, and I can see the logic behind the reasoning to change the date, I feel like after everything we've talked about, all of the origins, um, 
the holiday deserves to stay on the date it always has been held on. October 31st is Halloween. It always has been Halloween, even back when it was sewn. And I think to change it would be an affront to the history behind the festival itself. Um, and to change the date strictly for convenience um, is ridiculous and I, I am a strong believer that Halloween should stay on October 31st. Um, thank you so much for watching this video with me. Um, I'm going to include some links below um, to the sources where I found all of this information. Um, and I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was uh, informative, a little bit educational, um, and maybe gave you some stuff to think about and um, a feel to start getting excited for Halloween. It is on its way. And um, yeah, so thanks again for joining me. Please feel free to drop any questions or comments down below. Hit that thumbs up if you liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more from me and hit that bell so you get notifications. And please stay spooky and lovely. I'll see you next time.